Queen Bey adds another jewel to her crown and inspires yet again as she is named a fashion icon at the CFDA Awards. The 2016 CFDA Fashion Awards brought out plenty of stop and stare looks courtesy of Carly Kloss, Naomi Campbell, and of course, Beyonce. Queen Bee was named this year's fashion icon, and in true Beyonce fashion, she delivered a powerful speech. We have an opportunity to contribute to a society where any girl can look at a billboard or a magazine cover and see her own reflection. You have the power to change perception, to inspire and empower and to show people how to embrace their complications and see the flaws and the true beauty and strength that's inside all of us. By the way, the singer is wearing $9 million worth of Lorraine Schwartz jewelry in her Givenchy suit. Hey, the Icon Award winner is always the night showstopper. Remember Rihanna's naked dress in 2014? Also at the annual event to celebrate this year's best in design, Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen for their brand, The Row. They turned up on the carpet with little sis Elizabeth, all wearing black, of course. Olivia Wilde showed off her growing baby bump in a cutout dress, while Lena Dunham kept things hopping in fuzzy bunny slippers. Shoes? Last night's event also honored the late David Bowie with a special tribute award. Look how good I look. Ain't this just the perfect specimen of a man right here? Will Smith will play a special role in Muhammad Ali's memorial service on Friday. The actor will be a pallbearer. Smith, of course, portrayed the boxing legend in 2001's Oscar-nominated film Ali. A star-studded affair in Toronto last night as the talents joining and returning to City, FX and Viceland primetime lineups celebrated the Rogers Upfront after party. As we told you yesterday, City will be home to the most buzzed about new TV series, including 24 Legacy. I'm gonna kill a lot of people. I have to try and stop them. Why does it need to be you? I'm the only one I can trust. While the reboot will not see the original series star Kiefer Sutherland reprise his role as Jack Bauer, he's an executive producer and he told us he's pretty darn excited about it. And I always have believed that that the real star of that show was the idea. By putting the clock in the corner of the screen, they really have changed an aspect of the genre of the thriller. And that will continue on, and I'm as excited to watch it as anybody else. And starting on Wednesdays this fall, another franchise reboot, Lethal Weapon, starring, as we told you yesterday, Damon Wayans. Terry Hart caught up with him to chat about reinventing Murtaugh. What the hell are you doing? Martin Riggs, we're gonna make a great team. You know, you say Lethal Weapon, Around the world, people know what it's what it is. What are the potential risks of bringing something that's such a well-known franchise to a different medium? I think the immediate risk is social media before it even airs. So they're going to go, you shouldn't touch an, you know, this iconic franchise until they see it. And then I think all that goes away. It's that good, really. From a dramedy to a straight-up comedy. A really big duffel bag? It's a time machine. I go to the past every weekend, sometimes Tuesdays. Making History sees Adam Polly as Dan, a nerdy guy who invents a time travel machine and finds he's a lot cooler in the past. You come from a history of shows that have such a rabid fan base, from Happy Endings and The Mindy Project. Uh, so what is the fresh, new evolution for this TV show? In this show, my hair is combed to the right. Uh, it's a revelation! <laughs> yeah, no, I think that the difference is it kind of has a, a bigger concept than the others, and it deals with, like, a sci-fi element. There's some some lost inspiration to it, some Breaking Bad. And then, of course, it's, it's written by one of the best writers from Family Guy, so it's it's hilarious. As always, you can get your entertainment news here first in the morning at any time on Twitter as well at N City.